What's up everybody? Dean Rule with Ocali Sports alongside Gabriel Trevino, Sam Hutchins, and Ben Hutchins here to recap OSU's 55-3 win over Kansas on homecoming. Sam, what stood out to you tonight? Well, I think what stood out to me was uh, who the player that Colby Harville Peel called the most competitive player on the team was Spencer Sanders tonight. He balled out. He only played two quarters, even a little less. He was pulled just before halftime because the lead had grown so much. But Spencer Sanders got it done in the air, on the ground, and blocking with his lead shoulder. Uh, you know, his, his teammates seemed to find it pretty awesome, and they were all hyped up. But I know uh, they <laughs> they don't want Spencer Sanders throwing blocks with every uh, every time he gets a chance. But Spencer Sanders, uh, he sprung a 14-yard touchdown run from Brennan Presley on a reverse, and really just displayed his. Uh, Competitive t competitiveness tonight after coming off a game where he was just absolutely dejected against Iowa State. So he led the charge of, I mean, there's probably 12 players we could pick that, you know, balled out tonight, but he was certainly one of them. Sam, another reason we saw, you know, another area we saw Spencer Sanders' competitiveness was his ground game, right? He was the leading runner for OSU uh, for, you know, the majority of the first quarter, outrushing Jalen Warren. But yeah, Sam, he had uh, the touchdown on the ground to get things started for the Cowboys. Um, back when this game was close, you know, in the first quarter. It wasn't close for long. It, it was not. But Spencer Sanders really getting it going, you know, 44 yards on the ground in the first quarter. Uh, that was one area where, you know, we hadn't seen a whole lot of that um, continually. You know, it looked like the game plan was kind of tailored to getting Spencer Sanders the ball on the ground. And I thought it was really an, an area of success for this offense. Gabe, I know we've talked a lot about the offense so far, but I know the defense really showed up. Didn't allow a first down in the first half. Can you talk a little bit about what they did tonight? Well, as they said in the press today, just believe in Coach Knowles. He's the mad super scientist of this defense. He's the one that schemes everything up, calls the plays, and the players just believe in him. They do what they ask him to do, and that's how they succeed. Uh, didn't allow first down until, I believe, the third quarter somewhat, and this was like the biggest margin of victory since the Vietnam War ended for a homecoming game. So, I mean, pretty good night for the defense out here, even when uh, backups came in, Corey Black. Good night for the defense. Gabe, what year did the Vietnam War end? 1975. Mama, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You did your homework for it. I'm impressed. That's a pretty dominant day for this defense. And a dominant day for the entire OSU offense. Guys, uh, complimentary football. OSU had four drives start in the K-State territory, deep in K-State Kansas territory. Kansas territory. Oh, no. They started, um, they scored on all those drives. You know, three touchdowns and one field goal on those drives. A couple different guys got action with the field goals. Tanner Brown looked good. A nice bounce back game from him uh, after a tough week in Ames. And also, um, uh, Alex Hale got you know on the board as well. So uh, he got off the driver range and onto the real course for uh, another solid performance from OSU special teams. Any last thoughts from anybody? I mean, when it's 55 to three, the game you got to pick. It's hard to talk about one person, one unit, one group that performed well. Everyone in the press conference is complimenting each other. So uh, there's always the Kansas caveat of it happened against the Jayhawks. But uh, after walking out of here, you know, Oklahoma State has only had two wins this season with double-digit margins of victory. So uh, with the Kansas caveat included, you know, obviously not a highly ranked team, it'll be interesting to see if this team can find any momentum for the future off such a beatdown where they could get the second stringers in before halftime. I was going to talk about how the offensive line played well. They protected Spencer Sanders and Shane Ellingworth uh, very well tonight. Uh, Spencer Sanders was very rarely under pressure when he was. It was after like six or five or six seconds under uh, pass protection. Scrambled out, uh, threw on the run well, threw in the pocket well. Overall, good game from them. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. It's been Dean Wool with Gabriel Trevino, Ben and Sam Hutchins with Ocali Sports. And we'll be back next week to cover the West Virginia game.